Hello everyone, my name is Sapashish. I initially planned to make a video presentation, but then I'm down with cold and you might just see me sneezing a lot. So uh, I'll be talking about how different localization tools and communities work and, and what is there to share, um, how those communities could work together and, and then share a lot uh, with themselves. Uh, so a little bit about myself, um, I work at the Center for Internet and Society here in Bangalore and uh, I'm a long time uh, Wikimedian, I'm active as, uh, as a localizer in the Mozilla community and I'm, I'm also active in various other free and open communities. I have represented uh, in the Open Glam community um, where we collaborate with gallery, library, archive and museum and other cultural institutions to open up data and open up cultural information and making them available online with free licenses. Um, I've, I've written a lot of blogs and articles about the free and open source and the free knowledge movement. Um, I'm, I'm active as a, as a blogger on Global Voices and OpenSource.com. So, uh, so today uh, I'll be talking a little bit about my experience working with various localization communities and and the and the learning I've got from those communities. And uh, so, most of the lo localization communities um, um, that are that are active right now share a lot, and uh, and there exists a lot of mutual grounds for collaboration and learning from each other and. and and also sharing the, the existing work that have been done by other community members. So, uh, Shreel as a community and as a project has the potential to be a cross-project localization hub and uh, this needs to be more inclusive and more broader. And the reason is it is already, uh, it is already uh, expanding into its various different genres like the agriculture, um, or say the health uh, and then many other new additions to the original Shreel project. I personally want to see Shreel as, as a cross-platform of, of different localizations and, and for that there, there is a need for different communities to come together and, and Shreel could be this binding force uh, could be could bring more communities together into one place under one roof and they could discuss they could have a consensus and and then collaborate with each other to have standards for different languages so apart from uh, terminology uh, there is also a need for creating guidelines and these guidelines uh, have to be for uh, individual languages and these uh, language guidelines could provide a template a basis for uh, different localization communities to work together and to use that guideline as a template. And that surely exists on the FRIEL platform, but what we need to do is we need to collaborate with more communities, with more native language users, and then improve it over time and add more things to that, make it more uh, general and make it, make it more suitable for the larger audience. There, there is a common pattern of um, the string that are, that are localized uh, across different platforms and we tried that uh, for, for our native language Odia. And those of us who are active as uh, MediaWiki localizers started contributing to uh, Mozilla and then Facebook and then Google Translate and then we realized and probably you would have realized the same thing that more or less uh, the, the localizations are same across platforms, across different projects. And that's the important thing for us to realize that there is a common platform, a frill, and that could be the base for everything. But at this moment, that's not happening. To have collaborations with the institutions. So when these localizations already exist on Fuel, um, different uh, companies, different organizations do not know about the existence of Fuel. And that's that's a gap uh, that's a gap in the outreach. That's a gap in promoting the project across the world. You know, when I was uh, when I was working on on different projects, uh, one of my personal favorite is Pantoon by Mozilla. And uh, why I really liked this project is because Pantoon doesn't doesn't just limit its uh, in a localization summary uh, in the Mozilla products, but it also expands that into other FOSS uh, localizations and Microsoft's localization um, and also existing 
localization in different Mozilla platforms like uh, Locomotion, for instance. Uh, so everything uh, which are spread across different projects are shown in the translate in the localization memory, and that's really really useful. Uh, the way Pontoon has been designed uh, is very user friendly. It's um, it's as fast as any other localization tool, maybe a little more, a little less. Uh, but the but the real fun is. Uh, using the tool on the web platform and then uh, you, know, um, you know using that for uh, localizing um, especially when you see different options um, below your localization uh, field and then you and you, then you uh, click on one and then you know it's really it's really fun using that um, the uh, so while using that I reached out to the translate.org.za uh, it's a South African organization that uh, also is hosting the Amagama, uh, which is a localization aggregator for all the world languages. And and what they said to me is um, they have tried to aggregate projects from all across different uh, open source projects like KDE and Genome, um, you know, Translation Project, Mozilla, Fedora, Debian and several other uh, such um, projects and so that's really useful because what they have done is they have tried to bring all different projects together and their localizations together and then they provide one uh, one single data set and that data set is available on Pontoon so I mean imagine something like this that 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 Phil can do for the Indic languages or and that would be really uh, handy for the localization localizers when they're working on different projects, uh, and the, the other thing is, uh, I was also working on the Wikimedia's content translation tool. The content translation tool is really useful, especially if your language has existing corpus of uh, of words uh, being translated from uh, a different language. So, for example, if you have um, English to your language uh, corpus, then it's really really handy. To use the machine translation and the memory to to uh, translate other language Wikipedia articles into your, your uh, language, and uh, and that also has a, a very uh, nice user interface. Though it doesn't it doesn't have so many sources to show translations from different sources, uh, unlike Pontoon. Um, and and my greatest takeaway could be you know fuel could be this one single aggregator and there is a need for having one such platform and fuel has all the potential for that um, and uh, but there there is a gap in the business development uh, so there is there is this company I wouldn't take the name of the company but this company provides um, um, localization for various mobile companies and they predominantly use the fuels um, data set and as fields data sets are available under free license um, you know they are open anyone can use them uh, anyone can use them for the commercial purpose as well but the only problem with that is um, those data sets do not uh, specifically uh, promote about the licenses that they use so this company whichever uh, company does take that data set also doesn't really care about the copyright and you know, uh, fuel is a contribution of multiple uh, localizers. There is a need to attribute them when you use their work, and it's it's totally unethical when somebody uses their work uh, and doesn't attribute them. I I haven't I haven't seen any of the uh, free and open source projects um, promoting their free license so widely, but there is a need for one, and and especially when when there is um, there is unethical practices in the world where a lot of uh, corporations are stealing um, people's contributions without attributing them there is a need to talk to them there is a need to establish some kind of partnership with them and we have seen the partnership in the content translation tool by uh, Wikimedia and they have collaborated with uh, Yandex um, where Yandex's purpose is used for the content translation uh, similarly, Google and Wikimedia had a, had a partnership where Google, um, you know, paid translators 
and those translations went into uh, Wikimedia. So they had a collaboration with the communities. And uh, for some communities, it worked really well. For example, Tamil, the collaboration worked really well, where in communities like uh, Canada and uh, Bengali, it didn't work that well. So having partnerships in place helped a lot. And I think for real, it's, a, it's high time that uh, we reach out to corporations and, and share about the work that has been done. But at the same time, also ask them uh, specifically to attribute people who have contributed to the project. Thank you, everyone, for watching me. You can write to me or email at psubhashish at the red gmail dot com or over Twitter. My handle is subhapa. Thank you again. Bye-bye.